Welcome back to another episode on the Maurus Films channel. Today we have something special that will help you out when monitoring your footage and your filmmaking workflow. As you know, I'm making a lot of monitor reviews, from the 5 inch to 7 inch, all the way up to 50 inch. And today we are actually reviewing not just a monitor, but a wireless image transmission system built inside the monitor. So you can use this system in various multiple ways, connected to other wireless transmission system from the Shimbal series, or actually to your smartphone or tablet. It's called the Shimbal Zolink 600M, and we shall go in a deep dive and understand how the system works, make a complete in-depth review, unboxing included, and get out to test the range and various settings and understand if this system is made for your production. Okay, so let's firstly go to an unboxing. You will get the Shimbal Zolink 600M in this white box. Inside you will find the Zolink 600M monitor and instruction manual. The monitor is powered by MPF batteries on the back and it has two MPF slots. The main purpose of it is to have combined for a really long and extensive usage or hot swap between multiple batteries without worrying about turning off the screen. The weight of this monitor with the built-in wireless image transmission system is 300 grams, but it will always depend on which battery you are mounting on the back and which size of it. Note that I'm using the biggest version of the MPF series battery with 74 watt hour that will last for almost six hours on this device with just one battery. Let's have a look on the dedicated ports from the Shimbal Zolik 600M. On the left, you have an HDMI in and HDMI out pass-through port, up to full HD, 60 frames per second. Headphone monitoring jack, DC in 7 to 17 volts. On the bottom part, there is DC out power port, if you want to connect additional devices on it. In the middle, there is the standard one quarter screw mount. On the left, we can notice an USB-C connection that acts as debug upgrade port. And note that you can't power the monitor through the USB-C. It would have been amazing, but no, you can't, it's just an upgrade debug port. You can power it through the battery or the DC in 7 to 17 volts. You will also find the SD card slot for loading your LUTs, actual test to actually mimic a teleprompter or internal recording mode that you will get more in the following minutes. On the top there are three customizable function buttons. There is also a slight leap where we can understand the built-in antenna for the wireless image transmission system. The screen is pretty bright with 1200 contrast to 1 ratio and 1000 nits of brightness. And you will get a really crisp 5.5 full HD resolution up to 60 frames per second. Actually I got three Shimbal monitors for testing. One is on my Sony A7S 3 giving the wireless feed to this monitor and then this monitor is just looping out from the HDMI out port to this one. So you can use an extensive wide range of combination when using these monitors. Before we get out, let's get to the specs and features that this screen offers. The menu system is pretty well designed and will get all the features clearly laid out. You will be able to select the input type and wireless connection, selecting from HDMI if you are using it as a transmitter, or wireless if you are using to get the signal from another Zolling device or monitor, wireless code and password. The connection happens pretty fast. And let's just have a quick jump to the menu settings so you can understand where you can switch the wireless mode type under the system settings, fast and easy transmitter or receiver. You will be also able to pick up to 12 channels. On the scopes menu system, you are able to put waveforms, RGB panels, histograms and vector scope visible, selecting the opacity of it, marker ratio settings with color safe area, anamorphic modes and center marker, focus settings with the color and sensitivity option. The sensitivity actually makes a great difference. Zoom in functions so you can pitch to zoom without any problems. In the exposure menu settings, you are able to add the zebra pattern with the percentage of it, false color and monochrome mode. Under the color settings menu, you will be able to load your favorite loot, either selecting the ones that are pre-installed in the device, just like the standard S-Log, V-Log, C-Log or LED-Log, or load your own loot through the SD card. 
you will be able to change the gamma, turn on the HDR mode with PQ HLG modes and select the Kelvin value for your monitor. There is also an amazing teleprompter menu system that you can actually use if you want to use this monitor as a teleprompter and it will actually act and play your text in the text format and you can actually read from the monitor and be more fluent in your recordings. The great feature is the built-in recording to the SD card and it will record the feed from HDI cable or a wireless transmission up to full HD 60p and you actually make the trigger recording. So once you press the record button on your camera, it will also trigger the recording on the monitor screen and it will all be saved on the SD card. After it, you can also play all the clips straight on the monitor from the recordings on the SD card on the monitor. There is also the lock screen function. On the menu settings options, you will be able to change display brightness, contrast, saturation and sharpness with specific RGB adjustments. Under the settings menu system, you can choose normal, underscan, volume of the built-in speaker and backlight. DC out if you want to use the port for the DC power out option. There are three function buttons on the top that you can customize on your liking and choose what feature to be ready to use in seconds. In the system settings layout, you are able to choose the language, version information, software update, do a factory reset and choose the transmitter or receiver mode. Ok, so I have three of this system and I can confirm that two monitors can be configured as receivers while one is configured as a transmitter. But if you do so, there will be a connection issue when one receiver always lags and disconnects. So in this time period, I would only recommend to use one additional monitor connected to the receiver. But through the HMI output, we can actually loop the signal and use bigger monitors on top of it. The stated latency is 0.08 seconds or 80 milliseconds. I was testing it with 4K 100 frames per second and I counted around 25 frames in the 100 frames period while that monitor sends a signal to this and while this monitor reacts. It's always related to the current electromagnetic environment where you film. And yes, I was actually able to record around 250 milliseconds or 0.25 of a second of lag or actually latency for this type of monitors. I got similar results in the test outside. The monitor is stated to have 500 feet of transmission range and it's approximately 150 meters. So I went outside to test the transmission range, brightness of the screen and the latency in an open field environment. And we are out testing the Shimble 600M monitor with the max brightness as 1000 nits. This is a truly bright sunny day and it's kind of 11 o'clock. So this is kind of an extreme situation. I will now start walking to test the latency and transmission distance. If we get some cutoff of the signal, so we will understand if this is an actual good transmission system for a long distance up to 100 meters in this not so much populated area, but there are some big strong Wi-Fi signals around with some antennas because we have here a free Wi-Fi zone so it could interfere in the footage. Now I am at around the 100 meter mark and this is the actual footage and I will check later in the studio if we got some transmission delay or actual some transmission cutoff. And now I will be going straight back the church to understand the clear line of sight and the actual not so clear line of sight if we can get some signal or we are truly blind. Now I am getting back to the receiver. I'm holding the Xeon Crane 3M with the Sony A7 III and the Shimble 600M. Now I am turning back and this test will end and we'll be going back into the studio to understand more how the system works and to get some conclusions. I am back, let's get straight to the studio. Outside I got the actual same result, maybe slightly less, at around 200 milliseconds, so I wasn't able to reach the 80 milliseconds stated in the spec sheet. 
but I can confirm that the latency isn't bad and you can focus pull with this system. Using a bigger MPF battery, you will be comfortably using this monitor for 6 hours straight. Using two of them, you should have enough juice for a whole day of shoot. One little downside is the one quarter screw mounting option. And yes, I understand we have a lot of ports, but there is just one. So if you want to connect to, let's say, side gimbals, you will have to adapt your gimbal or actual your shooting system to adapt this monitor because it has just one one quarter screw mount and it's on the bottom. Rather than that, this monitor is really perfect for any type of production and it's really exceeding my expectations. The price for this monitor is 399 and you can get in combo edition for 798. And actually I think this is a fair price for the actual wireless transmission system that you get in the built-in right inside this bright 5.5 inch monitor. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I will be happy to answer to all of them. Until my next one, thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe with the bearing icon to get notified every time I make a new video and see you on my next one.